this nail and it will hold it. Good morning, River Valley. It is a beautiful day in the house of the Lord. Hi, Mike. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, our scripture today. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks on the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will, you, will your Father in heaven give good gifts to you? So in everything you do to others, what you have, would you have them do to you? For this sums up the law and the prophets. Good morning. i 
Yeah. 
church. Uh, I think some of you are going to like this one a lot. Uh, what a beautiful song it is. What a beautiful melody it is. You know those parts of harmonies and counter things to sing. Go right ahead and do that. Lift your voices and raise. Hallelujah. As you sing along with us, please. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Oh, you saw me 
changes and transforms everything that we do and say who we are. Let it make us people that Jesus and our Father would have us to be. Let's worship the carpenter as we partake today. Let's uh, let's pray. Father, 
I wonder what kind of things Jesus made as a carpenter. How beautiful they must have been, crafted by beautiful hands. They created that wood from nothing originally. Lord, uh, but I know, you know the most beautiful thing is when he suffered on the wood, on the tree, across Calvary. He willingly carried for us, he willingly was nailed to, he willingly gave up his life to complete the mission that you sent him on to die for us. How, how wonderful. Lord, we ask your blessing on this bread, this juice today. They symbolize Christ's body and blood. Oh, how beautiful they are. Oh, how beautiful, Lord. May we marvel in the mystery that is our salvation. We pray this in Jesus' name. What a sacred moment we just participated in as we met around the Lord's table. And I believe it's an important time for us all to, to uh, open God's word. If you have your Bible, would you get your Bible out? Could we have the house lights on again? That'll allow me to see people as I preach. And I want you to follow along. Uh, ask Margaret to read Matthew 7, 7 to 12. Good morning, River Valley. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. If you appreciate God's word and the reading of it, would you say amen? Amen. amen. We're preaching in the, uh, book, the month of... Uh, July and August, the uh, teaching that comes from Matthew and trying to pick a phrase, a verse, a teaching out of every chapter. I don't know if I'll go through all 28 chapters, but we'd love for you to be introduced to the gospel according to Matthew. And another way to get introduced is each uh, Wednesday night at uh, 6.30 and each Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, we're doing a verse by verse study of uh, the chapters of Matthew, and we'd love to have you join us. And we've had as many as 40 different people on Wednesday and Thursday, and we would love to get into the 50s if you have time to join us for study. Our goal is to introduce you to Jesus because our faith is in Him. He is the Christ 
the son of the living God. And, and we think his life is worth sharing. We're in the Sermon on the Mount and we're looking at chapter 7. We've learned a lot from Jesus and today we want to learn from him the basic instruction of verse 12, which we often call the golden rule. And a generalization of that is God's people are to be gracious to others. How many of you have heard the story in 2012 of the cross country race for Kenyan runner Abel Mutai was only a few meters from the finish line, but he got confused with the signs and he just stopped thinking he had already finished the race. But the next runner right behind him, Spaniard Ivan Fernandez, right behind him realized that competitor thought he was done. And Ivan Hernandez, Fernandez started shouting, no, go on, go on, go on. But he was speaking in Spanish and Mutai didn't understand the Spanish language. He didn't understand what he had done. Realizing what was going on, Fernandez pointed ahead and pushed Mutai to victory where the Kenyan runner won and gained the first place prize. Those who saw that were, were impressed. One reporter even asked, why did you do this? Yvonne replied, my dream is that one day we can have some sort of community life where we push ourselves, but we help others along the way. Not understanding this, the reporter asked again, but you could have won the race. And Yvonne looked at him and replied, but what would have the merit been of my victory? What would be the honor and the medal I gained? And what would my mother think of it? Wow. That mom taught that son the golden rule to help others and most of us would take advantage of a person's weakness and help instead of helping them and to strengthen them and to let them succeed along life's way that mother taught the golden rule and jesus as he was starting his ministry in the sermon on the mount in matthew 7 verse 11 he taught the family of god to do the same Here's the memory verse. Do to others what you want others to do to you. Do to others what you would have others do to you. You, you sit in print there. Would you recite that with me? Let's have a memory verse together we learned today. Do to, to others, others what you would have others, others do, do to, to you. you. Now, over the years, uh, some of you who know of our ministry, you know we have a, a Hoops League basketball, and we've set up basketball courts on either side of this gym, and we teach children uh, how to play basketball. We have some fun. We gather families, and it's just a great ministry. But then each night, we teach Bible verses like the Great Commission, the Good Confession, and the Golden Rule. I know one kid tried to quote that verse after he had been introduced at the outset of the play and then we had a, a half of play and then they're supposed to recite the verse and shoot a free throw. One of the kids tried to quote it, do to others as they do to you. <laughs> Another one said, do to others before they do it to you. <laughs> and another one, he got totally wrong, do to others because they've done it to you. It's easy to laugh, but don't laugh too much because reciting those 12 words precisely is hard. But we have to also admit living them out is probably harder. And so today I want to give you several lessons about the golden rule that we as followers of Christ need to know and practice. The first thing about the golden rule, I want you to know it is not a prerequisite for salvation. 
You know, my wife, uh, she meets a lot of people. And one time she told me she met a person and as they were exchanging introductions, uh, that person learned that she was a preacher's wife. And Tana went up and she said, I noticed immediately he made a reply. You know, I tried to live by the golden rule. And it's almost as if he was trying to prove how good he was. As if he was saying, well, I'm not such a bad person. I've never murdered anyone. I've never cheated on my wife. I've never robbed a bank. I live by the golden rule. And it's almost sometimes people say that I do that part of what Christ taught, and that's going to get me into heaven. I'll just be good enough. But I want you to know, as great as the golden rule is, and even if you and I practice it daily, that by itself will not get us into heaven. Even if we avoid doing bad things, that will not get us into heaven. No, it is no other than Christ himself and his shed blood that gets us into heaven. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Instead, we're created in Christ Jesus. Ask me sometime what I think that phrase means. Instead, we're created in Christ Jesus, and I'll tell you. Ask me sometime. But I believe we're created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Not to earn our salvation, but to do them because of the grace. Which God has prepared in advance for us to do. And so we as followers of Christ should just... Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, because that's just who we are. We're created in Christ Jesus to live that way. And aren't you glad about what we can do for others that it doesn't mean we have to memorize the scripture or we have to practice the golden rule perfectly in order to get to heaven? Aren't you glad? Amen. Well, the golden rule is not the standard to get you into heaven. But the second thing I want you to know, the golden rule is a standard for you and I who are citizens who want to be going to heaven. And that we want to bring others along with us. If we really looked at the entire Sermon on the Mount as Jesus is disclosing that the kingdom of heaven is near, he, he gave those beatitudes and, and they're just a teaching, be happy. Then he talked about, you're the light of the world, so be light. He talked about, you're the salt of the earth, so be salt. He taught the Lord's Prayer in chapter 6, so he wanted us to be praying and know how to communicate with our Father in heaven. And then here is 7, there's so many good teachings, I only picked one, but he teaches, here's how we behave toward one another. We call it the golden rule. And more than anything, Jesus is just teaching those of us who want to live on earth and one day join him in heaven, be gracious to all. Do good to others. I, I, I like in, in the chapter of 10 of Acts, one of the descriptions of Jesus was he went about doing good. Oh, if only all of us were described. Zip Zeller once said, people often say that doing good to others doesn't last. And then he said, well, neither does bathing, but you still do that. <laughs> so do good to others every day in every encounter. Whether you're in line at McDonald's and you wish the line went a little faster, whether you're in the grocery store and you wish all the lanes were available, you didn't have to wait. Be gracious. And then when someone is gracious to you, that action becomes so cleansing that when you receive it, you would think to yourself, please do that again. Please do that again. 
So do to others what you want others to do to you. And in that soul action, we do what Christ taught. Now why do what Christ taught? Well, the golden rule is a standard based on a principle. And the principle is that every person matters to God. Every person matters to God. There was a Facebook meme that reminded us, Jesus in Luke 15 tells the story of a shepherd that has a hundred sheep and one goes missing. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one. But the 99 probably thought, but what about us? What about us? Don't we matter to the good shepherd? And the answer is, of course, the 99 matter to the good shepherd. But the one that lost is the one who needs the attention. Amen. But everyone matters to God. We live in a world today where that is questioned. Some are more important or may be considered less. Where would our homes be? Where would our churches be? Where would the hospitals be? Where would the orphanages be if they didn't show each person in the home matter to God? George Mueller lived in 1805 to 1898. You probably haven't heard of him unless you've been in Christian circles, but he built many orphanages in Ashley Down, England. He did those orphanages, led many of those who were without parents to a better life without a personal salary. He relied on God to supply the money and to meet the needs of each orphanage. And so hundreds of homeless children in England in his season of life, he cared for them in the name of Christ. It is said that Mueller had a motto on his desk that simply read, it matters to him about you. It matters to God about you. And he lived out James 1.27, which says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. The purest form of religion, according to James, is to take care of those who are in the greatest need. Do to others as you would have others do to you. Reach out, help, lift up, push on, point a better way. Lead others to victory. When someone in their home can't help. Mueller testified at the end of the life. You know, I never missed a meal. Always had clothing, always had shelter. And the kids I cared for had the same. The Lord never failed to supply all my needs and help his children along the way. Oh, if we only understood that there is a God that believes in us, wants us to live in his honor, and will take care of us if we'll trust him. Jesus not only taught God cares for the little, the last, the least, and the lost, if you really look at the rest of Jesus' life from the Sermon on the Mount on, he just lives out the golden rule. He does for others what he would have others do for him. That's what he did when he met the woman at the well. He treated her especially well when others wouldn't. He forgave the woman caught in adultery when people were ready to stone her. He spent a day with Zacchaeus, that notorious tax collector and his life changed and that was only days before Jesus went to the cross and then think after the cross Jesus reinstated Peter after he heard the denials and heard the rooster crow and the Bible says he even looked at Peter at that moment he knew he had been betrayed 
but after the cross, he got him at the seaside shore, fed him some food and asked him, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. You love me. Yes, you know I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, you know I love you. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. You're forgiven, you're forgiven, but you gotta go do my will. Jesus taught all those who followed him that you matter to God, God, even if you blow up. Even if you blow up, because that's why I came, that's why I'm here. The fourth thing I think the golden rule teaches us, it encourages to do a behavior on God's behalf that is not initiated by the negative or by hate or anger. Do you realize that nearly every religion has some kind of phrase that is so close to what we call the golden rule? They teach it, but most of them teach it on the principle of what not to do rather than do unto others as you would have others do unto you. They, they use the phrase do not. Confucius taught what you do not want done to you, do not do to others. The book of Tobit, what you hate yourself to no man do. The Jewish rabbi Hillel, what is hateful to yourself, do not do to someone else. An ancient Greek king, Nicholas, wrote, do not do to others the things that make you angry. Now all of those seem logical, but they're a bit on the principle of something negative that you don't want then you avoid doing it to others. And Jesus goes and says, do the positive. You do it because that's how you would like to be able to live and encouraged. Have you ever had something happen to you that just made you mad? You can probably identify with a fellow who I heard spent three and a half hours in doing long lines, surly quirks, and insane regulations at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. He was so frustrated after that time there, he stopped by a toy shop on the way home to pick up a gift for his son. He went to the toy selection, he picked up a baseball bat, took it to the cash register, and in frustration just plopped it down. He was ready to leave. The clerk said, will that be cash or change? And the man snapped back and he said, it'll be cash. And then he caught himself and he said, oh, I apologize for my rudeness. I just spent the afternoon at the Bureau of Motor Vehicle. <laughs> the clerk smiled in that moment and said, shall I gift wrap the bat? Or are you going to take it back to the DMV? <laughs> <laughs> in our exchanges in life, we, we can sense when some interaction is frustrating and, and just disappointing. And maybe totally wrong. Jesus' Jewish audience on that hillside was well acquainted with the Old Testament teaching about the mentality of retaliation. In the Old Testament, there's teaching an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. If you break your neighbor's window, oh, by accident, of course, that neighbor might retaliate by smashing all your windows and then set your house on fire. <laughs> Paybacks are terrible. Wars have had their beginnings because of disagreement and flagrant violations. And even in our nation, we have been rocked. We've seen things that are deadly wrong, but the retaliation by others is nothing but that which was triggered by anger and hatred and the desire to pay back and pay back more. Martin Luther King once said, if we do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, we will be a blind and toothless nation. And he's right. 
We can't be inspired by hatred in order to improve society, our lives, and our neighborhoods. We have to be inspired by love. By love. The golden rule is initiated by love for all. Not only am I going to teach you the golden rule, in the Roots League, we taught kids the gospel in a nutshell. John 3, 16. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And so God loves his creation. And think about his creation over their time. Adam and Eve sin, Noah sin, Abraham sin, David sin. You, you just go through the Old Testament and there were people who took the Lord's name in vain. They didn't remember the Sabbath day, didn't keep it holy. They, they, they would build idols. They, they just couldn't stay right with God. And then in love, God sent Jesus. And we know the end of the Jesus story he went about doing good and what he did from that. A day on the cross. A day on the cross. And so we just got to listen to Jesus that we got to be motivated by love, not hatred. And what Jesus is teaching his disciples, we treat others as we want them to treat us. The golden rule of friendship is something like this. Listen to others as you would have others listen to you. The golden rule of family is give others in your family the same consideration you wish others would give to you. The golden rule at work is the way you want to be treated. If you were boss, then treat your boss that way. Or better, even when the boss treats the employees and the customers the way the boss would like to be treated. See how it works if we just live in the world as God would want us? You see, his kingdom would come on earth as it will one day be in heaven. Have you ever shopped at J.C. Penney's? Do you realize that store was started by James Cash Penny? When he was a child, his dad taught him the golden rule, and he said, son, if you follow the golden rule, you will live a great life, and God will take care of you. In 1902, he started a business, and the name of that business was called the Golden Rule Store. Penny did not like to use the word employee. He chose to call those who worked with and for him as associates and he treated them as he would want to be treated and he knew by helping them prosper they would ensure his success as well he built his whole life on this verse we call the golden rule he died in 1971 the name of the store changed to jc Penney's. And at his death, it was the fifth largest department store in America with over 1,700 outlets that all were built on the premise of treating others as you would have others treat you. Makes you want to go buy J.C. Penney's, doesn't it? But with that testimony, J.C. Penney proved a person can practice the golden rule and build a pretty nice kingdom along the way. But last week we asked the question, whose kingdom are we building? Folks, we need to be seeking his kingdom. We need to be building his kingdom. And all these things will be added to you. Jesus said, treat others as you want them to treat you. Why? I don't know if you recall the little poem I said last week by Edgar Guest, but one of the lines says this. For to see good put into action is what everybody needs. You see, the golden rule of our society is my neighbor is the one who needs my help, and I will do for him what I will want him to do for me. 
And Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan who stopped and helped someone he did not know. But the man was beaten and left for dead. The man was in desperate need. And that Samaritan helped that other person, paid for his expenses and said, I'll get you covered if the cost is more. And when that story was told, Jesus said, well, who's the good neighbor? And everybody said, oh, the Samaritan. And then Jesus said, go and do likewise. And I just think all throughout Jesus' life, he went to great pains to say, treat others as you would have others treat you. And wouldn't most of the pains of our society be healed if we just practiced the golden rule. And when it is practiced, people are blessed. I want to show you a video of this gal who's being carried around the bay since her name is Sarah Tuklowski. Listen to the story. The last Saturday in April, the second game of a softball doubleheader between Central Washington and Western Oregon. Well, we were both neck and neck fighting for the conference championship. As a senior, this was Sarah Tukolsky's last chance to win a championship. She'd never hit a home run before, not in college, not in her life. But at the top of the second inning, with two runners on, on the second pitch, that changed. <laughs> In her excitement, Tukolsky failed to touch first base, so she quickly turned back. Her pivot, like, just didn't pivot with her. And I heard her kind of yell, and she dropped to the ground, and I was like, oh, no. Tukolsky, with a torn ACL, crawled back to first base. She was a long way from reaching home plate and keeping her first and only home run. If anybody would have on her team would have helped uh, Sarah, she would have been a call, a call out. That was the problem. None of Tukolsky's teammates were allowed to touch her. But that's when Central Washington's Mallory Holtman, a player with more home runs than any other in conference history, a player for the opposing team, spoke up. I went to the home plate umpire and asked if we could pick her up and carry her. And he looked at me a little strange. And the umpire went and said, yes, you can do that. I'm still standing there in shock. I don't, I said, thank you so much. We asked her, she's like, is it okay if we pick you up and carry you around the bases? And I said, yes. And you know, and say thank you. And she says, you hit the ball on the fence, you deserve it. Holtman and Wallace began to carry the injured to call speed stopping to touch her left foot on each base as the three made their way around the diamond. When I looked up, I, I didn't see, you know, giant like, smiles and screams. I saw emotion and tears and, and people crying. It's a great moment when someone has character to step up and do the right thing at the right time. You're proud. Be associated with those kids. Let us take the phone to the season number eight, Sarah Tukolsky. Mallory Holtman, Liz Wallace, and the Central Washington team lost the game that day, four to two. Sarah Tukolsky lost the rest of her season and her career to a knee injury. But for the spirit of sportsmanship, a greater victory made on a long trot around the bases, a trip that truly touched them all. Would you stand with me? Wouldn't it be great to live in a world like that, that just listens to the spirit of God, even in the heat of a contest, when everybody does want to win, but you just stop and you just are gracious and you do to others as you would others do to you. 
I hope that story proves to you everybody matters to God. And that God demonstrated his love in this way while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Do you believe that scripture to be true? Would you say amen? Amen. amen. Would you be a follower of Jesus? Would you take on this challenge not to earn your salvation by doing the golden rule, but because you're a Christian saved by grace, because you're a person who's come under the blood of Christ, that you are now saved and able to live for him graciously. We invite you today, if you've never before heard of Christ, or you've never accepted Christ, would you declare, I believe in Christ. I believe in that God. I believe in that Christ who died for me. And I want his salvation and the atonement from his shed blood. We call on you today, the day that the church began. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Repent. Turn to God. We have a moment in our worship where after the preaching, we ask people to turn to God by coming down forward and just ask God to be real. And me be humble and me surrender to the Lord. It's a humbling moment, but it's not humiliating to you. And then we ask those who would follow that repentance up with confession of Christ. I believe in that Christ who died for me. I believe he's risen from the dead. I believe he's up in heaven and going to come again. I believe, I believe in Jesus as the Christ. And then if you've never been baptized, we encourage you to immediately be baptized. For you can be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. To receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That you might rise and be baptized and wash away your sins by what Christ did at Calvary and the blood applied to your life. We invite you in the name of Christ today here at the end of this service to hear, believe, Repent, confess, be baptized. And maybe you already have been saved by Christ in another circle of faith, another church family. Maybe you just need some partners to walk with the Lord with. We hope you'll pray about making River Valley your home church. And all we ask people who've been saved elsewhere is would you confess Christ and just say, I want to be partners. We invite you in the name of Christ today to make a decision like that. But our goal is, whether we're partners in ministry, we all become part of the family of God, and we all practice the golden rule. Not to earn salvation, but to show our gratitude for what Christ has done for us. Do to others what you would have others do to you. If you'll live that way, would you come and share your faith in Jesus and model that? repentance and baptism for that faithfulness to partner in ministry. Would you come as we say?
Kevin, can I say just one thing? Sure. Is this on? Is this, can I get this live? Um, I just want to announce that we're putting together the cookbook. So if you have recipes for the cookbook, we need those ASAP. And that goes for the people online as well. If you get that to an HIM member, they will give that to me. But if you're online, you can email, or anyone can email that to rivervalleycookbook at yahoo.com. Thank you. Thank you. 